live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. It is super hard to be a good defensive coordinator and call a good game. The offense holds all the cards. They just need to succeed once, while you've got to succeed three times, or four times depending on whether or not the opposition is in four-down territory. You have to guess what play they're going to call and have the right defense for it, while at the same time, not making your call too obvious to the point where the offense can change the play and exploit it. Being a defensive coordinator is a hard job, and it's one that, if you're going to be good at it, requires laser focus and the ability to see the field perfectly. In other words, it's not ideal if your defensive coordinator loses his vision before the game and now only has one working eye. I want you to do something right now if you're able to and you're watching this video. Cover one of your eyes with an eye patch or a towel or with anything you might have around you. Now try doing activities that you typically need both eyes for to do well. Heck, you could even watch this video with an eye patch on. It's not so pleasant of an experience, is it? It doesn't seem like it would be conducive to good production. Because now, I want you to imagine a defensive coordinator losing his eyesight the day before the game, yet being in the booth to call the game despite having one working eye, and him calling a superb game that results in a victory. Well, in 1986, that's exactly what happened at the Aloha Bowl with Arizona defensive coordinator Chris Allen, who only needed one eye to shut down his opponent. And this is the story behind one of the craziest and most remarkable performances in the near 40-year history of the Aloha Bowl. Before I talk about the performance in question, because it truly is remarkable what Chris Allen was able to do on this day, we need some context to understand how Arizona got to this point, and how well their defense was playing before this. The good news for Arizona heading into 1986 was that they were coming off of a really good season, and one of the best in program history at the time. In 1985, they went 8-3-1, which was the most wins they had in a season since 1975. They went 5-2 in Pac-10 play, which set a program record at the time for best record in conference play, and they made it to the Sun Bowl, where they tied Georgia, marking the first time in program history that Arizona went to a bowl game and did not lose. The bad news, however, was that because of their success, they lost their defensive coordinator, Mo Ankeny, who was offered the head coaching position at Bowling Green, his alma mater. This meant that Arizona needed a new defensive coordinator to try and carry the success the program had the year before. With that, they hired Chris Allen, who had been with Arizona on head coach Larry Smith's staff in a variety of roles, having previously served as the offensive coordinator and as the outside linebackers coach for the team. You don't see a guy on the same team having experience as both the offensive and defensive coordinator, but that's what Allen's impressive resume looked like. And in 1986, not only did the Wildcats pick up right where they left off, but they were arguably even better than they were the previous year. They spent practically the entire season inside the top 20 of the AP poll. They went 8-3 in regular season play, with another 5-win season in Pac-10 play. In one of their biggest wins in program history, they defeated their in-state rival, Arizona State, by a final score of 34-17, completely dominating them. And that was big, because ASU entered that game undefeated as the number 4 team in the country. And without that loss, considering the fact that ASU won the conference and then beat Michigan in the Rose Bowl, ASU might have had a share of the national championship. Safe to say, in 1986, Arizona was really good. And part of why they were good was because under Chris Allen, they had a great defense. The Wildcats finished the season allowing just 17 points per game. Out of 105 teams at the Division 1A level, the Wildcats ranked 20th so they were well inside the top of the country from a defensive standpoint. Arizona was extremely consistent defensively as well, as they only allowed more than 21 points in a game twice and 30 points in a game once, so you pretty much knew what you were going to get out of them on a weekly basis. They rarely had a bad game. And if you play the Wildcats in Tucson, forget about it, because trying to move the ball on them in Tucson was like trying to fight a land war in Russia in the winter. In six home games, with two of them being against ranked opponents in ASU and USC, the Wildcats allowed just 78 points, for an average of just 13 points per game. 
1986 season was a great time to be a Wildcat, and bowl committees seemed to think so as well. Because as a reward for their exceptional 1986 season, for the first time in school history, they were going to the Aloha Bowl, which for the first time ever, was going to be on national television on ABC. Arizona was thrilled about the prospect of playing in this game against ACC opponent North Carolina, with head coach Larry Smith saying, The ultimate in football is to go to a New Year's Day bowl game. If you can't do that, you look at the place that wants you the most, and the place the players can have the most fun at. Basically, everybody dreams of a trip to Hawaii. And running back David Adams echoed the thoughts of his head coach, saying if you can't play for the championship, this is the place to go. Not everyone can see Hawaii in their lifetime. Not only was Arizona going to be going to Hawaii to play on national television, but they had a chance to win their first bowl game ever. There was a lot riding on the line with this game, and everyone knew that if Arizona was going to win, they were going to need to find a way to slow down North Carolina's offense, led by arguably the best running back in the ACC in Derek Fenner, and coming off of a win against Duke, where they went on the road and scored 42 points. The Wildcats were going to need to play lights out if they were going to win, and it truly was going to be an all-hands-on-deck kind of deal. The only problem? Their defensive coordinator, Chris Allen, had other ideas. On December 27th, 1986, the Aloha Bowl was going to be played. And on December 26th, one day before kickoff in front of a national television audience, with the legendary Al Michaels on the call on ABC, defensive coordinator Chris Allen suffered a nasty eye infection. We have no idea how he got the eye infection, or what exactly he did to get it, if he did anything at all. However, these are the sorts of things that just happen, are extremely unfortunate, and are extremely painful. Allen had been game planning for UNC for the past month, and now his vision was impaired, because he physically could not see out of his right eye. Seems kind of important for a defensive coordinator to be able to see what's happening, and to be scanning the field, and it's kind of tough to do that, you know, when you only have one working eyeball. But this wasn't going to deter Allen in any way whatsoever. He and his team worked too hard to get to this point. He was in pain, but he was going to do everything in his power to call the game and to assist his defense however he could. So not only did he try to fix the eye problem by wearing an eye patch on his right eye, but he was going to be calling the game like that. You know how some people jokingly say that they could do something with their eyes closed? Well, for all intents and purposes, that's kind of what Chris Allen was doing. Because with this game against UNC, one of the best offenses in the ACC who seemed to be peaking at just the right time, he would be commanding the defense and would be calling all the plays and making all the necessary adjustments with just one working eye. That raises the question. How the heck did this game go? How did Arizona perform considering the fact that they had a defensive coordinator who could barely see what was happening on the field? Well, the first drive of the game gave a pretty good indication as to how this one was going to go, and it gave it in the best possible way for the Wildcats. Because on the opening drive, running back Eric Starr fumbled the football, and it was recovered by the Wildcats. First drive of the game, and a turnover. Can't really do much better than that. On the second drive, UNC went three and out, thanks to two plays that ended up behind the line of scrimmage thanks to some great open field one-on-one -on -one tackling by Chuck Cecil and Troy Seifers. Two drives, and this one-eyed defensive coordinator seems to know what he's doing, as UNC has been held in check. Third drive, and once again, UNC can't get anything going, as the drive ends after Arizona plays the option absolutely beautifully. Didn't matter who would have wound up with the ball on this play, Arizona was in near-perfect position for every single scenario, and the stop led the Tar Heels to punt it once again, resulting in a drive with no points. Fourth drive, and even though UNC is starting with the ball past midfield in Arizona territory, it means nothing, because once again, Arizona is able to come up with the stop to keep that goose egg on the scoreboard. Much like the first drive, this one ends in a fumble, as Chuck Cecil makes the hit on running back Torin Dorn to pop the ball free and give Arizona possession again. Fifth drive, and it's another three and out. Five drives into this game, and the Tar Heels have yet to score a point or even get into manageable field goal range. Drive number six, and just like the last drive, it is a three and out, with UNC losing yards on the drive thanks to a tackle for a loss against the run and a sack. 
and drive number 7 results in the third turnover of the game for the Tar Heels, as once again, they lose it on a fumble. Although this time, instead of the fumble happening on a running play, it happened on a passing play via the strip sack. And when drive number 8 ended in UNC trying to move the ball down the field, but running out of time before we hit the halftime break, Arizona was up by a score of 13 to nothing, and looked to be in complete control of the game. Most defensive coordinators couldn't dream of calling a game this good. Most defensive coordinators couldn't dream of going to a bowl game against an explosive offense and shutting them out in the first half on eight drives while forcing three turnovers and never letting them get into field goal range. Yet, that's exactly what Arizona and defensive coordinator Chris Allen were doing. Except Allen was doing this with only one eye. To put into perspective just how dominant this defensive performance was on the part of the Wildcats, because it truly was amazing. At this point in the history of the Aloha Bowl, there had been five iterations of the game, including this one. Here's a look at every team to play in the Aloha Bowl at that point, and how many points they allowed in the first half of the game. There had been ten teams to play in the game thus far, so ten first halves to evaluate. Arizona had, by far, the best defensive performance in the first half in Aloha Bowl history. Half of the teams allowed double-digit points, and no team until Arizona ever shut out an opponent going into halftime of this game. UNC only had 137 yards of total offense, compared to 200 for Arizona, and on most of their drives, they went 3 and out, and truly were unable to get anything moving or going down the field. It took UNC until their 12th drive of the game to finally muster up some points, at which point, Arizona was already up 30-0, was well out in front, had the game wrapped up, and had all but won their first bowl game in program history, giving them their first win since becoming a team nearly a century before in 1893. And the main reason why they won it? A dominant defense called by a defensive coordinator with one working eye. After the game, the talk was about Chris Allen and how he did it. Because no one knew how he did. The night before the game, Allen usually gives the players a written test about the opposition and about their scheme. However, before the Aloha Bowl, he had to change it to a verbal test. Because as defensive tackle Jim Birmingham said, expressing serious cause for concern... You could tell he was in pain and was having trouble seeing. But once the game began, he did a great job. And Allen jokingly said after the game on his performance, UNC's offensive coordinator was supposed to put a patch over his eye too, but he didn't. What Chris Allen did on this day was remarkable, and that goes without saying. The man could not see out of his right eye, and could barely see period the day before the game. The man was in pain in the one part of your body that you absolutely cannot be in pain with if you want to call a good game that requires you to see the field well. The man could not see. Yet not only did Allen persevere and coach this game, but he did so by calling one of the most dominant defensive performances in the history of the bowl, and by commanding a defense that won their coveted first bowl game in program history. Because on this December day in 1986, Despite having to overcome all the hardships and injuries, Arizona defensive coordinator Chris Allen truly had the eye of the tiger. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.